Nesson.com presents The Hurry Up. Welcome into week four of The Hurry Up. I'm your host, Rachel Holt. It's a scenario not many of us could picture. The New England Patriots remain undefeated despite starting not one, but two backup quarterbacks in the first three weeks of the NFL season. Next up, the Pats take on the Buffalo Bills as more questions remain. So for some answers, we're going to send it out to Gillette Stadium with our very own Mikhail Vernava and Doug Hyde. Guys. Thanks, Rachel. And Doug, of course, the big storyline we're following down here is the Patriots' uncertainty at quarterback. But how might they be able to use that element of the unknown in their favor on Sunday against the Bills? Really to just keep the Bills guessing because the Bills have had to prepare for two quarterbacks this week, both Jimmy Garoppolo and Jacoby Brissett. And since they're both hurt, they might even have to prepare for Julian Edelman, A.J. Derby, Danny Amendola. Who knows? The, the, the Patriots really have a couple different styles of quarterback, and the fact that the Bills do have to prepare evenly for both guys. Obviously, every single team does prepare for multiple quarterbacks each week, but when there is uncertainty, the team has to dedicate the same amount of time to both quarterbacks. So one way or another, the Bills are probably wasting their time this week by preparing for one of these quarterbacks. And it is saying something that really the first sign of life we saw from the Bills was on Sunday against the Cardinals. And that was a defense specifically tailored to the Cardinals offense. They ran what they called a turbo package with seven defensive backs in coverage, three linebackers and only one defensive lineman out on the field. And they really did do a good job of shutting down Carson Palmer's passing game. They sacked him five times, intercepted him four times. Those were his only interceptions of the season. He had no touchdowns. It was very effective, but likely will not work against the Patriots offense because they're going to be very ground heavy. Yeah, they'll be ground heavy and the Patriots have already seen this now. So even if the Bills did want to throw it out against the Patriots, it probably wouldn't work. I would expect the Patriots offense to be pretty ground heavy if it is Jacoby Brissett. If it's Jimmy Garoppolo, it really kind of just depends on that shoulder whether the Patriots will be able to go pass heavy or not. But the Patriots have proven that they can rely on the run game and still win a game. That's what happened on Thursday. LeGarrette Blunt's really been going off this season. So I would expect another ground heavy game, but yeah, that, that whole seven defensive back thing, crowding the middle of the field, probably not the way to the, the Patriots this week. In Belichick we trust slogan that's really become popular in New England. Yeah. Bill Belichick has certainly earned that now. Let's send it back to Rachel. Along with week four of the NFL season comes yet another matchup in your fantasy football leagues. I'm joined in the Nesson studios by Nick Goss. And Nick, week four in the fantasy football season is tough because not only are we dealing with injuries, but it's also a bye week with the Philadelphia Eagles and the Green Bay Packers not playing. So let's try to answer some important questions heading into this week. First up in our keep or dump segment, Vincent Jackson of the Buccaneers has just nine catches this season, zero touchdowns, keep or dump. I'm going to dump Vincent Jackson. He only has nine catches to go with those 99 yards, and the Buccaneers passing offense has not met expectations this season. James Winston has six interceptions. The only Buccaneers receiver I'm owning in any fantasy league is Mike Evans. Russell Wilson for the Seahawks has zero rushing touchdowns, and he's a little banged up. So do we find a new quarterback, or do we keep him? I think we keep Wilson. You probably drafted him pretty high in, in your draft, so I think you have to hold on, for, hold on him for now. Zero rushing touchdowns is definitely a concern, but the offensive line was pretty bad in the first two weeks. It was much better in week three. Also, the Seahawks rushing attack was far better in week three, so I think there's more balance there. Wilson had a phenomenal year last year. We know he can put up big numbers. And last up, we have D'Angelo Williams of the Steelers. He struggled in week three, and oh, by the way, someone by the name of Le'Veon Bell is coming back into that lineup. So what do we do with him? Keep or dump? I'm going to dump uh, D'Angelo Williams. He was phenomenal in week one, maybe one of the best performers in fantasy, but the last two games he has zero rushing touchdowns. He's averaging less than three yards per carry in each of the last two games. And since Le'Veon Bell is such a dual threat in, the, in both the passing and rushing game, he's going to be on the field at all times. I just don't see D'Angelo Williams getting enough snaps or touches to be fantasy relevant with Bell in the lineup. Lots of questions this week. Thanks for the advice, Nick. We're going to send it back out to Gillette Stadium with Zach Cox and Doug Hyde. Thanks, Rachel. Patriots defense faces a different kind of test this week. Last week, they shut out the Texans, who were a little bit stronger in the passing game. This week, the Bills were a pretty good run game, as at least they were last week. What did you see from LaShawn McCoy and Tyrod Taylor on the ground last week? Yeah, I mean, they were, as you said, they were strong last week. They really didn't show a whole lot in their first two games. Um, Bills started the season 0-2. Run game finally, uh, finally picked up against the Cardinals. They put up 208 yards. 
and with that, they picked up their first win of the season. McCoy is, he had a little bit of a down season last year in his first year with, uh, with Buffalo, but he's still one of the most dynamic uh, rushers in the NFL when he's on his game. And like you said, Tyrod Taylor, one of the most dangerous uh, running quarterbacks. Definitely, and the Patriots run defense, I think the key for them is just to kind of prevent the big plays out there. They've been really good. Uh, pretty consistently, but they've kind of allowed a couple big plays out there. Patriots pass defense, not quite as much of a test. There's a question as to whether Sammy Watkins can play this week. There's also kind of a question as to whether the Bills offense is better with Sammy Watkins on the field. They beat the Cardinals without him, and I think when Watkins is on the field, Tyrod Taylor relies on him a little bit too heavily since he is such a good wide receiver. When he's out of the offense, they're able to run the ball more. Tyrod Taylor tucks and runs with the ball a little bit more, so maybe having him out of the offense will kind of help the Bills not rely on him so heavily when he is on the field. I, I agree with that. I liked their game plan against the Cardinals. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of Sh LeSean McCoy, obviously, but also a lot of short passes, a lot of kind of uh, screen routes, underneath routes. They weren't trying to hit Sammy Watkins down the sideline. This is the first really mobile quarterback the Patriots will have to face this season. So this will be a test for guys like Jabal Sheard, Chris Long on the edges there. They won't be able to rush as much, but they will have to contain Tyrod a little bit this week. How do you think they'll kind of prepare for that? Yeah, they can't they can't uh, pin their ears back against no. this guy. It's very different to prepare for a mobile quarterback. It's definitely uh, definitely gonna be a challenge for this for this uh, Patriots defense. Absolutely, and that will put a little bit more pressure on the Patriots interior rushers. So we'll see how they do. But back to you, Rachel. It's me again, but this time I'm joined by Mike Cole with a look at our Week Four picks. Mike, who are you picking to win this week? Uh, my lock this week, I'm going to go with the New England Patriots. I, I was impressed by what the Buffalo Bills did last week on the surface, but you dig a little deeper, they were really helped out by the Arizona Cardinals who turned the ball over far too many times and gave the Bills great field position. On the Bills' three touchdown drives, they started right at midfield, uh, and then they scored on a, just a terrible missed field goal opportunity from the Cardinals. Patriots don't make those kind of mistakes, as we saw Thursday night against uh, Houston. I think it's going to be a similar game plan for the Patriots, no matter who's under center. Rex Ryan's going to be all fired up. He's going to be getting after the quarterback, but I still think the Patriots are just too good and too disciplined to, to give the Bills anything to, to kind of play off of. They've shown us one thing so far is that you can never doubt Bill Belichick. That's right. As far as your upset of the week, who are you picking? I'm going to take the Cleveland Browns. They're nine, nine and a half point underdogs uh, against the Washington Redskins, who you know, had a nice win last week in New York. Uh, a lot of people back on the Redskins bandwagon. I'm not one of them. The defense is terrible. You look at that rush defense. They struggle, you know, real uh, a whole lot against the run. And the Browns have actually run the ball really well. Isaiah Crowell is having a great season already. Um, and you look at that secondary for Washington. D'Angelo Hall out for the season with a knee injury. And uh, they might be without Breland as well, who has an ankle injury. So uh, maybe it's a, another big opportunity for Cody Kessler to show that he's uh, not terrible. So uh, I look at the Browns. Maybe, it, you know, a chance to pull off the upset there. Well, Mike, I'll tell you one thing. If you're in a Survivor League and you're yep. just picking every team that plays the Browns, you've had two scares in a row, and you're one missed field goal away from getting out of that league. Right. Not a bad pick. Yeah, I like stay it. away from Washington this week. Yeah. Right. Okay, well, for more on the Week 4 picks, check out our podcast, The Spread. And now for the Power Rankings, we're going to send it over to Zach Cox. Here are my NFL Power Rankings for Week 4. There are two big climbers I'd like to single out this week, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Minnesota Vikings, both of whom currently sit at 3-0. The Vikings have been able to survive injuries to their franchise quarterback, running back, and left tackle thanks to a dominant defense and some surprisingly efficient play by Sam Bradford. As for the Eagles, we are all aboard the Wentz wagon after the rookie quarterback led Philly to a 34-3 blowout of Pittsburgh, the Steelers' biggest loss in nearly 30 years. Including the Steelers, whom we pegged as the NFL's number one team last week, seven of the top 12 teams in our Week 3 rankings lost in Week 4. That list also includes the number two Cardinals and number 11 Jets, who combined to throw 10 total interceptions and in losses to the Bills and Chiefs, respectively. As for the Patriots, well, we learned our lesson. After moving them from the top spot last week, they made us eat our words by destroying the Houston Texans 27-0 on Thursday Night Football. They're back at number one now, and we don't see them leaving that spot anytime soon, especially with Tom Brady set to return in Week 5. The name of the game is show and tell. This is where I bring objects in and give you a few developing thoughts I have on the 2016 NFL season. First object we're bringing in today, good old fashioned sponge. And that's because Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz has been absorbing a lot of information in his rookie season. He looks like a 10 year veteran out there with his latest performance against the Pittsburgh Steelers being absolutely incredible. I, I, right now he looks like the rookie of the year. Dare I say the NFL MVP through three weeks of the season. Eagles on a bye in week four. But let's give it up for the rookie quarterback because he looks like the real deal. The second object I'm going to bring in. Ah, uh, I got a receipt here. 
I, receipt right out of the wallet. Uh, water Club, Quincy Mass. Uh, and you know why I have a receipt? I'm not saying the Jets have buyer's remorse uh, for signing Ryan Fitzpatrick to a one-year $12 million deal. But if they did after his latest performance, I wouldn't be shocked. Six interceptions, through five, uh, five straight possessions with a pick, three picks in the red zone. The worst quarterback performance I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, you know what, the Jets, they're not going to go away from Geno Smith's the alternative, a little gross. So uh, I think that he's got to have every opportunity to bounce back. But Ryan, get it together, man. You have to stop trying to force the issue. The Jets want you because you can manage the game with that good defense. Stop trying to be a hero out there. Come on. All right, third object we're bringing in. Not really an object, but it's, uh, it's on my phone. It's Angry Birds, uh, which is exactly what the Arizona Cardinals should be after being slingshotted out of the sky by the Buffalo Bills in week three. The Cardinals are one and two after three weeks. They lost to the Patriots in week one. Probably should have won that game. And in week two, they bounced back. Week three, what was that? Come on. Buffalo Bills are in disarray. Cardinals didn't show up. Fortunately for them, they got a favorable matchup against the Rams in week four. So I expect there to be some angry birds. And it's going to be some angry Rams after that game. Thanks, Ricky. Who doesn't enjoy a good game of show and tell? That does it for this week of the Hurry Up. Don't worry, we'll be back next week. And if you didn't get enough of us, you can check out some of our podcasts or head on over to Nesson.com for all your NFL news.